Yeah, it's looking like a good spot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hey, Tony here, Ram Ventures 2.0. Where are we at and what are we doing? Well, where we're at, <laughs> we're right off of Route 42. You can see a car going right there. <laughs> so we're in a clump of pines. What are we doing? Well, hey, we're back from Florida. It's only 31 <laughs> degrees. So, uh, brr, I got my uh, mittens on, but it ain't helping with the fingers. I got to close them up, but... I think we found a spot. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this tree and then we're gonna use that one right there. We're hammock camping. And I got some neat stuff to show you guys that I just got, it was sent to me and uh, I think we're gonna do some cooking on it. All right, here we go. So first things first, I gotta get this backpack off, but uh, Trekking poles come in handy, you know, especially since I'm not real stable on my foot. Uh, this is all pines. It's all the pine needles on the ground. I mean, look at that. You can see a whole pattern there where the water was just rushing the long needle pines. So that's a neat spot there. But I'm liking these two trees. Let me get this backpack off. Let me find a place to put the trekking poles. Oh, I think I'll put them right over here. Yeah, this is a old dead pine. We're just going to set our trekking poles right there. We're going to need them in a little while because I think I want to set up a uh, porch mode. Uh, yeah, I got to watch that road right over there, but uh, let me get this off and then I've got to get the ridge line set up next. Oh, do I want to put the backpack here? I think I'll go on this little pine there. So first thing I got to get the ridge line set up. Oh man, my hands are cold. So I got this uh, continuous ridge line. This is the uh, one that was in the reel uh, by One Wind. And I took it out of the reel because that reel was too hard for me to reel up. So I thought I'd do it this way. But yeah, I th that should be far enough apart. So let me get this going. It's got a little carabiner on this end, so I'm just going to clip that and then walk it over to the other side or when your hands are cold. So I got the uh, one wind tarp here. I'm just going to, you know, fast forward you through all of this, uh, but I've got the ridge line strung up right there. Uh, so it is up already. I've got these uh, Prusik knots that are already on there. So I just got to hook my tarp to it and then string it out. So the first thing that we always do, I mean, it's chance of rain tonight. Um, yeah, possible snow flurries and stuff, but I've got to stake the tarp out. I'm going to go ahead and get that staked out. I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in porch mode. Maybe I'll look this way. However, the view is nice that way, but I kind of want to protect from the road a little bit. Yeah. So I'll get this uh, down and then I'll show you uh, how I tie it off then. All right, we got all three sides up. We just got to get this last one here. So when we were down at Hancon, I put the tarp away. That was the last I used it. So this is the first time I'm getting it back out. And it looks like I'll get this put in. So down there, one of the things that I Stitch had taught me up in the Anirondacks was just making this trucker's hitch and then going around your stake down here. And I've been doing it ever since. It's just so much easier for me to tie. And I think that is good. You don't want to get it too tight. Uh, so I just finish that off. Just with a simple pull through. And there you have it. Now, I don't have a stake in real good. There we go. That's <laughs> good. All right, perfect. So one thing I want to do real quick, just break some of these branches that are eye level. I don't want to get poked in the eye by anything. That's one of the things you want to make sure you walk around and you do. Just snap a couple of those. 
because you don't always see them, but there's our tarp. So we got it on porch mode, so we got that side down and that side open so we can look out. And I'll show you the tarp, but we got to get our uh, hammock up. So I'm using the uh, one wind uh, 11 foot uh, double hammock, but hey, I got an under quilt that I want to try out and a camp blanket that snaps in. Uh, and it also can be used as double insulation layer. Oh, these hands are cold. You know, I can't work uh, tying knots and stuff with mittens. <laughs> so, yeah. And so I got to keep my fingers out. But they get cold. <laughs> I think we're all set. I love them straps. Uh, them buckle straps. They're just so easy for me to handle. Um, so this right here is the hammock. All right, this is the new under quilt that I have that one one sent me to try out. And it's really cool. It's got these snaps right here. So I got it all snapped into place. I put it together at the house. I've got the under quilt uh, and I have the uh, camping blanket right on top. Now, one thing about this camping blanket, they say you can put it under your hammock uh, right on top of the uh, bottom quilt to give an extra layer of um, insulation. I think it's a um, camping blanket and under quilt combo, but it snaps the whole way across. I got it all snapped up and I stuffed it right in my backpack just like that so that I could get here and just deploy it quick. That's what I like to do. Uh, and then they, they have these uh, little carabiners here that are hooked to the ridge line. I just hooked them up there for now, uh, but you can see the under quilt just hangs but when you're in there you can grab hold of this and pull it right up and clip it in so it's kind of snugged around you well yeah let me fix this buckle here and get that ready to go so this is going to be the moment of truth <laughs> so first sit in the hammock so i got a hold of uh the hammock itself in the under quilt Move the top quilt or camping blanket back and then give it a nice little sit and a pull. Oh, that's nice. So I still have uh, some of the snaps on right over here. I've got one snap up here still hooked. Oh, you know what? I could, because this side snapped on there all the time. Well, I'm going to keep it snapped on all the time so my blank doesn't fall out. But look at that. I can use this right around me. Oh, that feels good. Staying warm. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to give it a lay. Now, some of you ask, why am I getting in my hammock with my shoes on? It's because if you don't know and you're new to the channel, I did have a stroke. It's very hard for me to put this uh, shoe on because uh, I have a leg brace. So I, and plus I do stealth camping. You don't want to take your shoes off in case somebody comes up and you got to run. <laughs> I can't run though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, tuck this one in there. Tuck this one in there. Ooh, I tell you what. I've always had a little bit of a problem with the top quilts. So they say you can grab this too and hook this up so it pulls this up around. I've got the one side hooked to it. I could hook this side too, but I'm not going to do that now. Because I'm, I'm just laying in here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I might lay here for a minute and get warmed up. Uh, yeah, so I could snap this blanket back on here. Yeah, I could. Oh, that's good. Uh, having my hands underneath here, it's warming up already. Yeah, it is. Well... I got things to do. <laughs> we got to cook a meal. And I want to tell you about this here, too. Uh, oh, I got to grab up here and get turned around. Oh, that's going to be nice. Yeah, and I can feel the insulation on the bottom already. Yeah, it's kind of radiating back up under me. Pretty cool. So on both ends, there's these shock cords where you can tighten things up on the under 
blanket or under a quilt uh, kind of snug it up I've already got it adjusted when I was at the house I've got it adjusted pretty good and then there's three shock cords that come up and you just hook the carabiner uh, from that right up on top here and I've just got it in there and runs down along both sides and there's my hammock so th then it has uh, adjustments in the middle here too where I got those carabiners so there's a, a shock cord that runs from one end to the other goes all the way up to the ends uh, and you can do the little adjustments there too I took care of all that before I got out but you're going to adjust it how you want it uh, but having that cinched around the hammock right there that's pretty nice now it is only 31 degrees and it's going to get down to about 28 they say it's a three to four season I think when they mean four season is if you take this say you had a different top quilt and you use this camping blanket snapped it into place had your hammock on top of it so it built a second layer on the bottom uh, quilt and then it would increase because you're now stacking. I guess that's the term. <laughs> I learned a lot down there in the hang con. If you get the chance to go, you should go. This was the, the uh, thumbnail for it. That's hang con. If you haven't seen those videos, it's four days. Uh, Stitch and I were down there. And when I got back, there was something else waiting for me too. And that's what we're going to cook on tonight. Uh, but yeah, I think I might walk up there real quick and just look at camp from up on that hill yeah so let's walk on up here i'm gonna leave my trucking poles down there i think i can get this oh yeah, let's take a look back man there's a lot of pine cones ah, there's our camp so far all right let's keep going up there's the road right over there so we're pretty close to the road not too far off yeah, it's going to get dark soon. Oh, look at that. Something's eating the pine cones. Look at all the pine cones. Yeah, I think that's squirrels eating the seeds off of them. Oh, I wonder if they're in there. They might be a ground squirrel living underneath that rock. If I was a ground squirrel, that's where I'd live. Uh, and then a quick look up. This big pine... So we're under all these pine trees. Very nice. I can hear the wind blowing through them. You can see them moving. Yeah, it's a little breezy. I'm glad I put the tarp up even if it doesn't rain. I think that's going to help. So we got the road right over here. There's a couple vehicles going. Yeah, let me get to the rest of the way to the top. Oh, there goes a car there. Yeah, this is a really busy road. Oh, I should have remembered to put my mittens over my fingers. Out of cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, the road's right there. It's pretty nice up here, too. There's a nice grass iron here, right over here. Yep, it's going to be a busy road all night long. But, hey, when you're camping off the side of a road, that's what you got to expect, right? Our camp's down there. You can't really see it too good. Uh, no, I can barely see it. Oh, maybe right here I can, but we're on a hill, so you're not going to... Nobody's going to be up here looking down at us, but we're kind of tucked back in there. You can see how it slopes down here, and then we're back on the back. There's an... Uh, the road goes that way uh, and then there is a little building over there yeah well i can get back down to camp yeah you can see our camp a little better you can see it right there so you can see a blue bag hanging off of a tree <laughs> that's what we're cooking on uh, i'll show you that in a minute uh, but let me get down this hill yeah there's more pine cones i think these Squirrels are really having a feast. You can see them at the base of a lot of different trees. But see what I meant by rows? See, there's a row there. Oh, there's a little pink thing marking a tree. And there's another row. And then if you go down this way, 
you just kind of see they're all been planted in rows. But right there's our camp. All right, let me get set up. Whew. Yeah, that was a nice little walk. All right, you can see, you can see I'm using this little uh, pine tree here that's got a lot of little branches hung off of it. But this is uh, what we're going to be cooking on. This is an, an adventure scotal. So it's uh, made by Tembo Tusk. Um, yeah, it's the term is a scotal. So Stitch had sent this to to me, and by the time I got home, it was at the house. And uh, there's information of about where he bought it from. Um, and it was guys we met down there at uh, Hancon and Dave. And I'll uh, down in the description is information you can check out their website, but. I'm looking forward to cooking on this thing, but I got to get it out of the bag. I w I've got a stool, but I'm wondering if I'd just sit on the hammock and camp or cook. I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, I think I'm going to sit here <laughs> and do all my cooking uh, and because I've got that camp blanket right here. I can throw it up around me. Uh, I've got the under quilt underneath of me so it's keeping my butt warm <laughs> yeah better than sitting on the stool right now so this uh is the adventure scotal it is 12 inch disc um they're regular scotals 18 but this is an adventure scotal so it's the adventure one it's smaller uh and i packed it right in my backpack now i wouldn't take this on a through hike because it'd be too heavy but just hiking in to go camping uh pretty cool well we're gonna find out how cool it is so it comes in this travel pack and i put other stuff in here as well uh that way i could get it all in here and then it's gonna be some of the stuff we're gonna be using oh I forgot there's a hat that came with it. <laughs> so, man, I don't know if I want to put the hat on. That's a cool looking hat. I forgot. I, I actually forgot about this. So maybe it'll be Chef Tony coming out <laughs> in a little bit. Uh, I better keep an eye on where I'm at. <laughs> Remember where I'm at. Uh, but yeah, so I don't think I'm going to put the hat on right now because this knit one's keeping me. This is that uh, possum hair or possum fur hat. So it does take a gas bottle. Uh, it did come with a burner. So we got a burner right here. And I think this was a... Uh, it is a 8911. I think it was a scout stove. Um, so that comes with it. Um, oh, I forgot it has an apron too. I'm probably not going to put the apron on. Too cold for that stuff today. So I'm keeping that in there. I put that to the side. What is this? Ah, oh, that's olive oil and a rag to clean it when I'm done and re-season it. And then what else did I put in here? What is this? Oh, <laughs> I'll show you what that is later. Uh, oh, and then I have my lantern. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. Um, oh, uh, a spoon. <laughs> Got that. Oh, and now this didn't come with it. I picked this up and stuck this in here. That's This is what we're going to use to cook on our scotal with. It's wood. It, I figured that rather than metal. But you can use silicone spatula or something as well. Like I was thinking we if we did eggs, but we're not doing eggs today. So here's the scotal. I got to put the legs on. Uh, let me get it out. I'm doing everything right here on the, on the hammock. So this is the disc. So this is what's called the scotal. Um, right there you have it. There's three spots for legs. It does come with legs. I'll get that screwed on and then bring you back. Uh, but, well, let me just put uh, one of them in here. So we're just going to stick it on there and give it a quick turn. Tighten that leg up. So you're just gonna go the whole way around all three. I'll bring it back once I got it all set up because I gotta get the burner out. I gotta slide the burner in, put the gas bottle on. Hey, then we can cook. I'll tell you what we're having when we're ready to make it. All right, so I got the legs all on. I'm just screwing down our gas bottle or our propane butane mix <laughs> bottle. So this is a, um, 
uh, regular camp stove here, but you can use the green propane bottle. You just got to get the adapter for it, which I have, but I'm using this little can. That's the same one I use for my lantern. Um, so you can see, got the legs on. They just screw and tighten up right here. And then there you have it. Oh, what are we having? <laughs> We're having, oh, let me look at here. Oh, that's dessert. Let me get that out of the way. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's something else I got to get out of the way. That's for breakfast. <laughs> and, oh, we are having steak fajitas. So at the house, I already cut up the steak because I wanted to marinate it. So this is your uh, steak right here. It's all chopped up, sliced in slices with the marinade on it. Ooh, Stitch sent me a marinade for steak fajitas. So we got that. And then I also cut up the peppers and onions. And that has been marinating as well in that same mixture. Uh, and then we got our trash bag right here. Let me get that to the side. Now these are those reusable uh, Ziploc bags, freezer bags. The one that's red, uh, that's the only one I use for meat, is the red one, because that way I always know. And not that it makes any difference, but this one's green. That's the veggies. All right, so what are we going to put those in? We're going to put those in a fajita, and I've got those over there in the backpack. You just want to turn on the gas, give it a good push. There you go, and there, <laughs> there we have it. Uh, that is our Skodal. So this does not have adjustable legs, so we're going to find a nice even spot for it so that our mixture doesn't... The bigger one has adjustable legs. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Ooh, that's getting warm very fast. All right, let's start getting our stuff cooked. Yeah, first thing we want to get on is our steak. Ooh, that looking good. Ooh, there's one onion. <laughs> right there's an onion. I forget. That must have got stuck on it and I put in. So this scotal is uh, going to be hot right in the... Right in this area, about a six to seven inch area. Let's get that all separated out. And then out on the sides, it's gonna be warm. And so we're gonna cook our steak and then we're gonna move that out to the sides and then put our peppers and onions on. And then we're gonna be eating. Yeah, you can see our steaks all getting done. It's uh, looking good. Just scrape some of the bits off. So I'm just going to scoop this up around the sides. And then we'll get our vegetables. So that's onions and uh, green peppers. Ooh. And they were marinating for about three, four, uh, actually about five hours. <laughs> yeah, so what that marinade is, it's just olive oil, garlic, cumin, some red pepper flakes, some cayenne pepper, salt and pepper. Yeah, that's about it. Well, that's looking good. All right, so we're gonna saute them up. <laughs> I think you can see a couple pieces of meat missing. That's because I ate them. <laughs> yeah, I had to hook up a light <laughs> because, oh, it is cold. But sitting here next to this, it's pretty warm. Let me stir my peppers. Oh yeah. Ooh, they're getting done. All right, so we got uh, little tortilla shells so I probably will throw the tortilla shells on the uh, hot plate uh, and heat them up a little bit. Like I'll push the stuff out to the side and then heat them up. Uh, but I've got two of them and I think that's enough. Oh, what did I have here? Uh, so this is the uh, secret aardvark sauce, right? <laughs> so this is some good stuff. Stitch told me about this, and when I was down in uh, Florida, there was a world market there. So when we did our airport stealth camp, that's what we had on that. Uh, so I'm going to put that 
in these steak fajitas. All right. Oh, I mix, mix it all together here. I'll tell you, this thing's working pretty nice. Sure is. <laughs> if we're stealthing, boy, I couldn't do this <laughs> if there was buildings and people around, man. They'd be smelling this, going, what is that smell coming out of them woods? Yeah. So we're going to move... Move everything out of the way. And then I'm gonna drop a fajita right down on there. And get our first one going. This size here is for about one to two people. This scotal here. But the uh, there are larger, that larger one that you would do more for a group. Give that a flip, quick flip. Ugh. Oh yeah. So I got this cutting board right here. We're just gonna slide this over onto it and then we'll scrape some of our fajita onto it and then we'll go from there. Peppers. Onions, steak. Get our other fajita on there. Get this pushed up. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so now that we're done, I'm going to use this cutting board is a little plate. So we got our aardvark sauce. Whew, you can see, really see my breath, can't you? Ooh, gonna give this, oh, I can set this right on top of there, yeah, I can. All right, so a little bit of secret aardvark sauce. That's some good stuff. Spicy, but not too hot. Oh, that's enough aardvark sauce on that one. All right, so I'm gonna give this a quick twirl, give it a close, and then we're gonna give it a good bite and see what it tastes like. Oh, this is gonna be good, I can already tell. All right, uh, quick roll up. And then I'm gonna leave the cutting board right there. That way it'll keep our other one nice and warm. And all right, first bite. There it goes. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. 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 -mm. That's the ticket there. So I can taste the marinade. That's a good marinade, but <laughs> that aardvark sauce, that's the ticket. If you haven't tried it, you got a secret aardvark sauce. Yum. I had to reposition the light so you could see it. That's a looking good. <laughs> it's tasting good too. All right, I have a whole second one to eat. And then I'll get that wiped down, put back away. Yeah, definitely getting darker. Mm. Still a lot of cars. Once it gets dark, I'll set the camera up so you can see all the cars going by. Yeah. Ooh, I should put this blanket up over my shoulders.
and just to sitting here a swinging in the hammock. And so I got the scotal all cleaned up and put away. That was pretty awesome. That's a most people wouldn't use it for backpacking. I mean, just like I'm doing, like going and camp somewhere, I'd take it with me. Uh, but mostly, uh, a lot of overlanders uh, use it that are doing like jeeps and stuff like that, overland overlanding it. So. Uh, I brought my water and stuck it up here in the hammock because it's 29 degrees. I don't want that to freeze because we need it because we got to make breakfast. <laughs> Not that we're making breakfast now, but we're going to prep it now because this is a Delicia Oats Overnight Oats. There's a link down in the description for it. But these overnight oats, I had my first one. It came in that um, box uh, from gar Garage grown gear um and it was a cho the chocolate cherry oh was that good I, I was gonna only eat um part of it because it's two servings i was just gonna eat part of it and uh yeah i ended up eating the whole thing <laughs> well i talked to philip from delicia oats <laughs> he watched the video he was like my family and i watched that video of the mall where you ate those hey <laughs> so they sent me five of them five of their flavors it's a variety pack so uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think there's sweet strawberry, uh, blueberry vanilla. Ooh, that one sounds good. Uh, the chocolate cherry. Uh, one other one. Oh, what is it? I don't remember. Uh, but may I put a picture right here? Uh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, but the one I grabbed is the apple cinnamon. Well, <laughs> Nice thing about this is it's 42 seconds of preparation at night. And then in the morning, you just get up, eat it because it overnight soaks. So you can do it in the morning and add hot water to it. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to get up, eat this, get things broke down. Oh, man, this pimp like it's feeling good. Oh, get it up over this shoulder a little bit more. Yeah, so I'll get that started. I'm probably going to put this somewhere because I don't want it to freeze so I might stick it with a hand warmer <laughs> when I'm done with a hand warmer I might stick it in a little bag with a hand warmer just keep it from freezing yeah because we don't want a popsicle delicious oats popsicle <laughs> right <laughs> oh boy yeah the, ah, my trash bag blown away it is a little windy so that's why I like having this on it cuts down on the breeze yeah yeah, definitely getting dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out the hand warmers now, so I got a set of them here. Ooh, shake them up. They're air activated, so I just took them out of the baggie. I'm gonna stuff those up in the mittens, and then that way, when I put my fingers back in, it keep them warmer. I said then I'll, I'll put one around the uh, Delicia Oats, but these are 10-hour ones. These were from Jake the Oregon Boy. He sent them on a mail Monday, and uh, I've still got a couple left. I do have a full body warmer that patch that you can stick on, but I didn't bring one of those along. <laughs> I don't know. I guess after being in Florida... I got spoiled because <laughs> it was like 74 down there to one day. Ah, very nice. And uh, come back here. It's cold. Yeah, just sitting here thinking about a dessert. You probably didn't think I brought a dessert, but I did. <laughs> I was down at um, Aldi's. I had to go down there to get um, Miss 2.0, a few things, but I needed to pick up that ribeye steak. Uh, a green pepper and an onion. Uh, but while I was down there, I found this. Uh, I love creme brulee. So they had these little things, creme brulee. You hear that? As sugar. There's a sugar packet that you put on there and you melt it. Oh, but you need a torch. Ah, I'll figure something out. So it's in a little glass jar, $1.99. 
Who doesn't love creme brulee? So creme brulee, you know, it's nice and custardy and cold. I've been letting it sit out here while I was just hanging out. Um, so it's not ice cold, but pretty close to ice cold. Uh, let me see what little packet is here. Oh, throw that in there. So there's a sugar packet and there's this little glass thing. Oh, I know what I can do. Ah, I'll bring it back in a second. All right, there's our creme brulee. I just sprinkled the sugar on top. I'm gonna shake it around and get it all the way over on the edges. All right, so let me show you what I came up with. Oh, we came up with a torch. Yeah, this is our little lighter, but oh, it's working. Ooh, smells like a burnt marshmallow. Yeah, it does. That's a good thing. Oops, so that's our little lighter that we carry around. I forgot I had this in the backpack. Uh, it's a good thing I did because look at that. Yum. So there you have it. <laughs> oh, you can even hear the crunch. Look at that creme brulee in the woods. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> mm. Mm. Good. Mm. Very good. So the, the custard is nice and cold, and that's what you want with a creme brulee. And you want the sugar to be crystallized on the top. Ooh, I could have had a little bit more sugar on top of it, make it a thicker crust. I can hear it crunching. Oh, did you hear that? Some animal. He wants my crumb leg. Mm. All right, I'm going to finish this. Ah, more cars. Lots of them. Oh, our delicious oats. <laughs> so I am going to uh, pour our water in here and then seal it back up. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to get to eat some oh, apple cinnamon oats. Oh, so it does say to put about eight ounces of water in. That's about enough. <laughs> oh, set that aside so it doesn't spill. Get my spoon out and just mix it up a little bit. Yeah, so these will absorb all that water overnight and then be ready to eat in the morning. Oh, that's good. Get them all, get it all out of the corners into the middle and then seal it up. Oh, I'm going to get an early taste. Mmm, <laughs> them raw oats. Very good. And the ingredients on these are amazing. So they use really good ingredients as well. Seal it back up. There you have it. All sealed up and ready to eat in the morning. All right. So like I said, I'm going to put that down in my backpack and I'm going to stick a hand warmer in there with it. That way it sits overnight. Doesn't freeze. Yeah, I walked away <laughs> just a little bit away from camp. I got my old light, old bulb in my hand. We got a green headlamp on. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I would just walk away and look back at camp. I got stuff all kind of put away to get ready to go to bed. Getting late, getting cold. <sighs> Burr. <laughs> this with my headlamp on. Just give you an idea what it looks like around me. You can see a guy lying there on that tree. Panning around and right over there is camp. 
there's our hammock and everything. So uh, it's getting late <laughs> and I'm getting cold. I gotta get my feet underneath that camping blanket, get my toes warm, but yeah. Oh, it's dark. Let me let you see what it looks like without the headlamp. Oh, if I can get it turned off. I just cover it with my hand. There we go, because there's a car coming in. Yeah. yeah. There we go. All right. So I am going to crawl in bed, and I will talk to you when I'm in there. Get my old light old bulb on. <laughs> All right. Well, there we have it. <laughs> That's the night so far. Well, uh, it wasn't very eventful, <laughs> but I am now in the hammock and I am toasty. My feet are already feeling better. Yeah. So, well, it's going to be a noisy night, I think, with the cars. But they're, they're, let me lean up here. They're far enough away that I don't really don't. What, they won't bother me at all. <laughs> Once I get lights out, I'm out for the night. Yeah, I don't hear a whole lot of anything. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I do have a game cam that um, Johnny D. Torres sent me. Uh, I do have that. I didn't set it up tonight because uh, I didn't bring it along, but I want to start doing that, uh, putting that on some trails. We got in here kind of not late, late, but around 2.30 we got in here, got set up. Took me a little longer to get set up just because of the temperature. Temperature is just too cold, hard for my hands to work. Uh, you know, getting that ridge line up and uh, just working carabiners, it's just a little tough when my hands are really cold. So, and I didn't even really venture out away from camp, but we did go up on that hill, um, up on that bank there and look down. But, but, <laughs> oh, my backside feels nice and toasty. Yeah, that uh, AMA quilt that I have, uh, that one, that one's good. That one's got me through a lot, uh, but so far this one's pretty nice. Yeah, I like that this snaps in because when I have my camping blanket on here, a lot of times it <laughs> starts falling out when I move around too much. All right. Well, hey, enough talking. Time to go to sleep. All right. Lights out. See you in the morning. So I just woke up a minute ago. Yeah, you can't see it on the camera, but there's just periodic snow flurries falling. It's just looked, it's uh, like two in the morning. Yeah, but I'm nice and toasty under here. That's for sure. All right, back to bed. I'm just listening to the sounds of traffic. <laughs> yeah, here goes another one. All right, so I've just been laying here uh, this morning. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, it's time to get up. I'm ready for coffee. Oh, we got them delicious oats too, that apple cinnamon. I think that was... Oh, they're in my backpack. Hopefully that uh, they didn't freeze last night. So it did get down to 27 degrees last night. Oh, I think that was the lowest it got. And this stayed pretty good with the under quilt in this top blanket. It did a good job. I don't know if I would go too much lower than that with um, just using the top blanket in the under quilt. If I went much lower, I'd probably do it like they said, stacking it, putting this one underneath of the hammock, in between the hammock and the 
bottom quilt because that would definitely give me more insulation than use a different uh, top quilt. It's definitely not as warm as down. Uh, I don't think because <laughs> I don't have a down one. <laughs> so this is all this is synthetic. Uh, just not sure how the down one is because I've never had one. All right. Yeah. You know, it's de definitely not. I'm going to say. Uh, uh, it's not going to be as light as down. That's for sure. Uh, you know, when I checked out hammock gear, uh, superior gear and uh, Dutch wear down there, you know, their stuff is light and yep. But this is a great alternative. Definitely cheaper <laughs> through one wind. I think this is the combo. I think it's what like 85. I don't know. I don't know how much it is. Well, I want coffee and I want <laughs> I want to get that apple cinnamon breakfast out of there and get that eaten or eight or something. <laughs> All right, let's get this day started. All right, here we go. Coffee time. <laughs> Ooh, that's cooking up there. Heating my cup up quick, so just gotta get my water in here. I figured I'd do all of this. I'd climb back in the hammock. Ah, uh, water. So, yep, that's almost boiling, almost ready for our first Ascend coffee. So I got this coffee right here from Mrs. Stitch when I was out there um, visiting Mr. and Mrs. Stitch uh, out in Colorado. And I've had this, oh, April, since April and of last year. I haven't drank it because I was waiting for the perfect time to drink it. I had given uh, them a couple of the uh, instant coffees that I had and they had given me this one here. And uh, I've had it and I've been waiting to do it on a camp. And I thought, oh, why not today? So I brought it along. It was in the zippered part of my jacket here. So I just unzipped it, check it on my water. I got that coffee all stirred up, so, oh, that cup's warm. Feeling good on my fingers, on my phalanges. <laughs> all right, so good morning, cheers. And it's the first cup of coffee in the morning. Oh, that's good coffee. So that first Ascend coffee, that's, um, you know, a cottage company. It's not a big company or... Um, but they sell coffee to the hiking community. Well, it's got a good flavor to it. Good job, guys. Mmm. <laughs> Yum, very good. All right, so I've got our delicious oats open. Ooh, and look in there. That's a lot of oats. That's a double serving. Ooh, cinnamon apple, overnight oats. All right, uh, I'm gonna get a spoon. I can see the diced apples on there. Yeah, I can. Wow, look at that. Uh, they uh, plumped up really good. <laughs> First bite. Mmm. Very good, very cinnamon. The apples rehydrated, very nice. There's another car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good balance of cinnamon. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, it is. And it's a little cold um, because it's cold out. <laughs> But that hand warmer actually uh, kept it from freezing in my backpack overnight. Uh, get another bite. 
Mm. Very good. Oh, that's real good. Mm. All right. Well, I'm going to lay here for a while. I'm going to finish eating and I'm going to finish drinking my coffee. Then I think it's time that we break camp down and get on out of here and get the day going. All right. Talk to you in a bit. There goes another truck. <laughs> it's just traffic, traffic, traffic. All right, but this overall was a really great spot. I really enjoyed it. Oh, my hands are cold. Uh, so I just got to hike on out of here. I think I'll be coming back here again. I, uh, there's, oh, I think this would be cool in the snow, right? <laughs> All right, oh, another car. All right, well, there's one last thing we got to do, and that's cue the music. There it is. All right, so hey, thanks a lot for coming along. Remember, it's just one adventure at a time. If you can't get out and have your own adventures, keep coming along with me. I think we're having an awesome time. Yeah. So I just got to hike on out of here. Tony 2.0 out. We'll see you on the next random adventure. Alrighty. Take care. Have a good week. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>